Good Sunday morning, and welcome to the October 13th, 2024 edition of the Pastor's Porch. I'm Pastor Brian Schmidt, pastor of Calvary Alliance Church in beautiful Hiawassee, Georgia. And it is a beautiful day today <coughs> out here on the Pastor's Porch. And just a little breeze, sunlight, and it's about low 70s for a temperature. Just really wonderful day to be outside. And uh, just thankful to be able to do this video for you. Got uh, Winston, the, the, the official observer, sermon observer back there as well and uh, looking forward to sharing with you God's word uh, but I want you to think today as we talk about the book of first Corinthians and, and this emphasis that we've been putting on wokeness all right uh, wokeness in our world and how the Corinthian church lived in a woke world as well and lessons that we can learn and, and something that I've been thinking about here uh, in preparation for today's message is is the lack of accountability in today's woke world all right the lack of accountability it just seems like People do not take responsibility uh, for their words, for their actions, for their philosophies, different things like that. And uh, so they just kind of do whatever they want and say whatever they want and video whatever they want. And it's out there on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media. And, and it's like people can just say what they want to say and, and there's no accountability for what they say or what they do. And uh, people do things that are wrong or questionable and, and there are no consequences. Uh, one that comes to mind here is recently there's been anti-Jewish protests uh, across our country uh, on college campuses and things like that. And um, things that certain people would do would have been, I'm thinking about January 6th, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a kind of a, almost a witch hunt for anybody and everybody that might have been in Washington, D.C. that day. And there's people that have been locked up in jail without uh, due process. And yet we have these anti-Israel uh, protests, anti-Jewish protests on college campuses and things like that. And people are destroying property and, and burning American flags and doing terrible things. And yet there seems to be hardly any accountability, any consequences uh, to their behavior. And it was the same thing kind of like back in, during the BLM protests and things like that. But, uh, you know, when there are consequences, though, people are surprised. I saw a video just this past week of a young lady that... Uh, took a pro-life sign. There were some there were pro-life demonstrators holding their signs, uh, just minding their own business. And, and uh, obviously, somebody was for abortion and and whatever took somebody's sign and tore it up right there. Well, there happened to be a police officer right there, and the police officer uh, took the young lady and and placed her under arrest. And, and she, she just couldn't get it through her head that what she had done was wrong. She had took. She had taken somebody's personal property, and and had destroyed it. And she she just it was as it was as pitiful actually her response. All right, but while there may not be accountability in today's wicked world, uh, we do need to understand as believers that there is a time for accountability that is coming for us who are believers. And so we need to wake up, just like our world needs to wake up to accountability and consequences, we need to wake up to accountability. And we need to wake up to be good stewards of what God has given to us, all right? There's an accountability for what, how God has blessed us, what he has given us. And, and he, he's gonna hold us accountable for those things that he has given to us. And we see that in our text for today. Our text for today uh, from 1 Corinthians is chapter four, and we're gonna be looking at verses one through five. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, where Paul writes, Let a man so consider us. All right? And, and he, the us here, he's, he's specifically referring to himself and Apollos and Peter. But uh, there's application here for all of us who name the name of Christ. All right? Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself, Paul says. Verse 4, for I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. All right, got two points to consider today. Uh, the first point is our faithfulness, our faithfulness. Again, we saw that in verses one and two. Paul let us, let a man consider us as servants of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found 
faithful. We as believers are to be faithful. All right. Paul said it's required thereby uh, stewards to be found faithful. All right. That word required actually in the Greek, I was kind of surprised as I was doing the study here means to seek, to seek. All right. Um, some more definitions here properly to seek by inquiring, to investigate, to search, to get to the bottom of a matter. All right. So the idea here is one of an internal investigation. All right. An audit, uh, an inspection. Now, uh, as a bus driver at Towns County Schools, uh, I get an annual uh, review, all right? And it's kind of like an inspection, an audit of me. And uh, they, there's different things that uh, the bus transportation manager, that he grades me on. And uh, so he is seeking, all right? He is requiring something out of me. And then once a year, he goes looking to see how I'm doing. And that's kind of what this word means, all right? Uh, there's an inspection coming of all believers, all right? And when our lives in, are inspected, when Jesus Christ does this inspection, faithfulness is required. Faithfulness must be found, all right? And faithful here just simply means to be reliable, to be trustworthy, uh, to get the job done, to do what uh, you're expected to do. And and. Paul here, he kind of gives us an indication of two different areas in which we are to be faithful. All right. Now there's others, but in our text for today, we see these two. All right. We are to be faithful in two different capacities. We are to be faithful, Paul said in verse one, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. All right. We are to be faithful as servants of Christ. Now I thought again, it was very interesting that the word here does not mean slaves as is quite often used in the New Testament, doulos is the word for that, all right? But this word actually means subordinates, subordinates, all right? The word literally means, when you dig into it, it means under rower, under rower. And it refers to the sailors on the lower decks of a Roman ship that did the rowing, all right? The emphasis here in this word it is about position rather than practice, all right? It's about subordination, uh, rather than the actual action of rowing the boat, all right? Uh, and so, like, the, these guys in the Roman boat, uh, the under rowers, they weren't on the top deck. They weren't the captain. They weren't first officers, anything like that. No, they were subordinate. They were under. They were serving in a position of uh, subordination uh, underneath, right? And, and so the emphasis here is on position. And you know what? We are all servants of Christ, all right? We're not in positions of glory and power. We're not in positions of uh, importance and authority and leadership, all right? Now, humanly speaking, in the church and other places we might, but in terms of overall eternity and in our relationship with Jesus, all right? But we are in a what? A position of humility and a position of obedience, all right? And it doesn't matter if someone is the most famous evangelist in the world or the most obscure Christian worker in the most obscure church in the most obscure little village out in the middle of nowhere. All right. No, for us as believers, we are all under under roar. I have a hard time saying that word under roar or you try saying it. Roars. There we go. Roars. We are all under rowers, right? Whether you're an evangelist, a missionary, a pastor, elder, deacon, Sunday school teacher, nursery worker, prayer warrior, whatever it is, uh, maybe none of those, maybe it's something else, uh, an encourager, whatever, all right? We are all on the same deck, as it were, all right? The deck of subordination, the deck of obedience to Jesus. And whether one has a lot of responsibility or little responsibility, humanly speaking, we are all to be faithful servants. And, and there's going to come a day that we are going to be inspected, and Jesus is going to look to see if we were faithful under rowers faithful in in a position of subordination under him luke 16 verse 10 jesus said <clears throat> he was faithful in what is least is faithful also in much and so you might think i'm not, i don't do a lot but jesus said that's okay all right we gotta be faithful in the little things and then as we're faithful in little things god might bless us with faithfulness in bigger things all right uh so we are to be faithful uh servants all right and then we are also to be faithful stewards. 
Paul said there in verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. He talked about servants. Now he's talking about stewards. And he says stewards of the mysteries of God. We're going to talk about that word steward first. Very simply, it means uh, the manager of a household. All right, the manager of a household. Kind of think maybe like a, a butler or something like that. Uh, I couldn't help but think of a fellow named Mr. Carson from a popular TV show called Downton Abbey. Uh, and, and Mr. Carson was the butler. He was the chief butler of this uh, rather large estate, fictionally fictional estate in England. Uh, I think it was like during the early 1900s and leading into World War II, somewhere in that time frame. And, uh, but it was Mr. Carson. He was the chief butler. He was the chief steward, all right? He didn't own the property. He didn't own the estate. He didn't own the big house. But he managed it for the owners. The owners, uh, was, I guess, I think it was the Crawley family, right? And, and so that's kind of where we are. Now, again, the steward doesn't own the property. He just manages it for the owner. And in spiritual t terms, we do not own the mysteries of God. All right? We just manage them for God. Now, Paul said, moreover, that stewards be found faithful and being of the mysteries of God there. What are the mysteries of God? Well, the term is used 27 times in the New Testament. Generally, it refers to a secret or, you know, kind of like a secret doctrine. Biblically, uh, there's a definition, the counsels of God, once hidden but now revealed in the gospel. All right, Christian revelation, generally speaking. Matthew 13, 11, the, Jesus was talking to the people in parables and, and the disciples came along and said, hey, what do these parables mean? All right, they're kind of like saying, hey, Jesus, these these parables are a mystery to us. And, and Jesus said this in Matthew 13, 11, he, he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So Jesus went on and he explained the mysteries of those parables to the disciples. So in the, uh, in the Bible, a mystery is not something unknowable, but rather it is what can only be known through revelation because God reveals it and he reveals things to us through his word and through the Holy Spirit teaching us. Now, in the Bible, one of the mysteries is the gospel, all right? The good news of salvation by faith alone in Jesus, how that Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Colossians chapter four, verse three, Paul said this, meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains. What's Paul? Paul's talking about the gospel of Jesus. And Paul said, I'm explaining the mystery. I'm revealing the mystery of the gospel. And he said, I got arrested for it, and now I'm in jail. All right. Another of the mysteries of the gospel is the church being composed of both Jews and Gentiles. And that was a new thing back in the New Testament. And uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 through 27 talks about that. Not going to take time to turn there now, but that was a mystery. I mean, for the Jewish Christians especially, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking Jewish, you know, the Jews are God's chosen people, but now Gentiles are being saved and Gentiles are part of the church. That was a mystery to them, but now God was revealing it to them that this is uh, how the body of Christ is. It's both Jews and Gentiles, all right? And, and so we, like the Apostle Paul, are to be good stewards of the mysteries of Christ. And, and I think Paul's probably specifically here thinking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the question is, what do we do with this mystery? What do we do with the gospel? Do we hide it? Do we keep it secret? And, you know, kind of like Gandalf talking to Frodo in the Lord of the Rings about the one uh, ring. And, and he told Frodo, keep it secret, keep it safe. Right? And uh, we, my wife and I and family, we've repeated that phrase a lot of times. Keep it secret, keep it safe. But we as stewards, all right, as managers of the gospel, we don't own the gospel. The gospel belongs to Jesus Christ, but we are stewards. We are to use the gospel responsibly and for what it's used, what it's intended for. And so do we hide it? Uh, like the, the, the bad servant in Jesus' parables in the gospel that he had the one talent, he buried it, he never did anything with it, all right? Or, or do we share the gospel, spreading it like seed so that it can reproduce and grow, all right? We are to be good stewards of that. Now, just kind of on a side note, you know, we're, we're, a steward was the manager of a household. Now, it's interesting to note that the church is considered to be the household of God here on earth today. And we are to be good stewards within the church, the household of God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul said, Therefore, as we have opportunity, 
let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. All right, so we have a stewardship, not just to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we even have a stewardship to the body of Christ, the church. First Peter chapter four, verse 10, Peter said, as each one has received a gift, all right, you've been blessed, you've been entrusted with something, all right? Uh, you're a steward of this gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, all right? And so we as believers, we must be faithful servants of Jesus and faithful stewards of the gospel because, brings to our second point, accountability. The first point was faithfulness. We need to be faithful. And the second point tells us why. It's because of accountability. There is a day of reckoning coming. And we will be held accountable. It says there in verse 3, uh, who are to be, well, <clears throat> who are we to be accounted, accountable for? All right, let's talk about this for a moment. <clears throat> verse 3, the first part, Paul says, but with me is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. All right, so we are not going to be accountable to man. All right, Paul wasn't worried about being judged by people. All right, in the NIV, this is translated, I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Paul said, I don't really care what people think. As long as I'm being a good, uh, faithful servant and a good and faithful steward and doing what God wants me to do, I don't care what people say, all right? And, and so we are not concerned about, are not to be concerned about what others think as long as we are faithfully serving the Lord. Now, he said there in, uh, that I should be judged, all right? The idea here of court, uh, and it, in the Greek, it actually has the idea of the word day, all right? Day. And so uh, it's interesting that, you know, sometimes we use the expression, they'll have their day in court. Remember that? Or, or we might say, well, their day is coming, all right? And, and that is so true. But Paul wasn't worried about man's day because he knew that there is another day coming, the day of the Lord, when all people will answer to the Lord Jesus. We'll talk about that again in just a moment, all right? So our accountability. It's not to man. All right, it's not to man. All right, we need not be worried about what people think about us as long as we are faithful servants and faithful stewards. And verse number three, the, the last part, Paul says, in fact, I do not even judge myself. And in verse four, the first part, he says, for I know nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this. All right, so what's Paul saying here? He's saying, you know what? My conscience is clear. I don't know of anything that uh, I have done not to be a faithful steward. He says, I don't know if there's anything I've neglected that's caused me not to be a good steward, all right? And so Paul lived such a life of faithfulness that he had no regrets. He didn't wish that he had done something differently. He didn't beat him up, beat himself up over things he should have or should not have done, all right? He was a faithful steward, a faithful servant to the best of his ability as he was filled with the Spirit of God. So our accountability is not to man. It's not to ourselves. But verse 4, the last part, he says, But he who judges me is the Lord. We are accountable to God. All right? God is the ultimate judge. It is God who will evaluate each of our lives. It is the Lord Jesus who will either approve or disapprove of our faithfulness as stewards of the mystery of God and servants of Jesus Christ. And you know, folks, that should cause us uh, to really evaluate our lives, all right? We're not to be, uh, we're not accountable to man. We're not accountable, as much as sometimes we we fall into that trap, we're not accountable to ourselves. We are accountable to God, and that day is coming, all right? That day of judgment, the Bema seat that Paul writes about in Second Corinthians. And, and so we need to be very serious about how we're living our lives here as believers on this earth. Are we being good stewards? Are we good servants of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What are we doing? How are we using the things that God has given to us? Now, that's the bottom line here, all right? That's the bottom line, is that each one of us individually will be accountable to God. Verse five again, Paul says, therefore judge nothing before uh, the time, all right? Because the Lord, until the Lord comes, all right? So it, at just the right time, the Lord's gonna turn the light on, on our lives. All right, he's, we're going to get to heaven. We're going to go to that Bema seat. We kind of touched on it even back in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where it says uh, the day will declare it. Each one's work will become clear. It's like God's going to turn that light on. And, and it's God that's going to judge. It's God that's going to inspect. It's God who's going to evaluate and appraise. And then 
it says here, the Lord comes who will bring both to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. You know, get this, then each one's praise will come from, from where? Is it going to come from the denomination? Is it going to come from the church leaders? Is it going to come, you know, something else? No, it's going to come from God. All right. He will reward each believer according to their faithfulness. All right. Now, when I was preparing for this, I couldn't help but think about on online reviews all right online reviews you know what i'm talking about it's like you can type into your keyboard or your phone uh you're looking up plumber you're looking up uh, a restaurant you're looking up a school you're looking up you know all kinds of stuff and you type that in and you get your results you know if you're googling or binging or or whatever yahooing i don't know what kind of searches there are uh but you do that and then all kinds of information pops up but usually right there on that first page that pops up there'll be a place where there are reviews and then stars <clears throat> reviews and stars a customer uh, or a consumer can write a review uh, and then the consumer can also rate the product using stars five being the best one being the worst and it's kind of I, I i was just curious and, and some of those reviews they're pretty they're pretty tough all right they're they're pretty harsh all right, and then there's other reviews that are great and nice, and I I figure that probably most reviews are negative, and uh, just as we as humans we tend to be negative when we have a bad experience. It's like we're going to tell everybody about it, but I, we're not so quick to do a good review. But anyway, so here just <coughs> for discussion's sake, sometimes there's some funny reviews all right here here was a, a review by a uh, user called cloverdale for and, and i almost hesitate to even say it but fresh whole rabbit fresh whole rabbit folks uh when's the last time you've seen that on on the internet or online shopping but anyway cloverdale for some reason did a search for fresh whole rabbit and got his fresh whole rabbit and this was the review pays for itself i bought two I left them alone in the refrigerator for a week, and now I have 38. Off to buy a bigger fridge. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, and, and then one more, one more little review. It says, parent-child testing product, five-pack. I, I even have no idea what this is. Parent-child testing product. It comes in a five-pack, if you have five kids, I guess. All right, but this reviewer that wrote the review said, well worth every penny. The parent-child testing product worked as well as I hoped i tested both my children using this device and confirmed my hunch the one-year-old was going to turn out as badly as i thought breaking my heart and living in the basement doing nothing but playing video games and doing badly at that as well without this test i'd have had to waste decades waiting for him to grow up before kicking him out i'm taking him back to the hospital <laughs> tomorrow morning oh god all right i thought that was humorous all right but but seriously thinking for a moment, all right, seriously, getting back to the topic, God is going to judge. God is going to inspect. He's going to evaluate. He's going to appraise. He is going to write a review. He is going to give us stars, all right? Now, what would God write about you? What would God write about me? What would he write about your life, your service, your love for God and for others, your faithfulness and service and stewardship, all right, your stewardship of the things that he has given you? All right, the talents, all right, the natural abilities and spiritual gifts that he has blessed you with, the treasures, the money and possessions that you have, your time, all right, the trophies, the life experiences that he has allowed. All right, what, what, what would God write about you and your faithfulness, your stewardship, your service? And, and then how many stars would God give you? All right, five stars being excellent, faithful stewardship and service, or where he could say, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, down to one star where you sat on your blessed assurance and, and did nothing for the Lord. All right, what review would God give to you? Well, my prayer this morning is that we would all be faithful servants, faithful servants of Jesus and stewards of the mysteries the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then may we have the testimony. May we have the review, all right? The review, as you will, that the Apostle Paul had, who wrote in 2 Timothy 
chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Paul said, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And to put it in today's uh, text, I have been a good steward. I have been a faithful servant. Verse 8, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. What score would God give you? How many stars will you receive on that day? Heavenly Father, God, it's kind of a hard thing to consider. Uh, judging ourselves, uh, knowing that you're going to look at us. But Lord, I pray that we might be like the Apostle Paul, that we give 100%. We do our very best to be the steward and servant that you would have us to be. Lord, as a servant, I pray that you'd help us to arrange ourselves under your leadership. Lord, uh, we are to be the under rowers. Uh, we're not up on deck. We're not the captain. We're not first officer or anything like that. We're not calling the shots. We are just faithfully serving you. We are to be in subject to you. But then, Lord, we are also to be faithful stewards of what you have entrusted to us, the gospel, the mysteries, the message of salvation, so many other things. But, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be good stewards. Lord, help us to understand that day of accountability is coming. And Lord, I pray that we'll be prepared because we've done our very best for your honor, for your glory, and for the salvation of souls. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for the sermon today and uh, the message here on the pastor's porch. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can email me, bkschmidt65 at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. And then our church is part of the Christian Missionary Alliance. Uh, but, oh, let me do this first. Our, our church website is calvarialliancechurch.com. You can get more information about there. And then we are also part of the Christian Missionary Alliance, cmalliance.org. Now, just some specific things about our church. Uh, we do have our Sunday morning ABF. I don't have a card for it, but we do have our Sunday morning ABF. It's kind of a seasonal thing. we got a season going on right now. We're talking about comparative religions. We've talked about uh, all different kinds of things. Uh, most recent weeks, we've talked about like Jehovah's Witness, uh, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, and some of those folks. Uh, this Sunday, we're talking about Islam and the Baha'i faith. And that's going to be really interesting as well. So that's at 9.30 Sunday mornings down in our fellowship hall. And then our Sunday morning worship service is at 10.30. Uh, I invite you to come join with us. And, and as always, nothing fancy, just, just family getting together to fellowship and to worship the Lord. And, and we do have a wonderful church family. Uh, Tuesday morning, we have our ABF going through the gospel, the gospel, the book of Acts. And uh, we're in Acts chapter 5 right now. We just talked about the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And uh, we're going to move on from there this week, this Tuesday, at 927 in the Fellowship Hall. Wednesday night, we have prayer meeting. I uh, encourage you to come pray with us, 6 o'clock. And uh, if you're not able to come pray with us, but you have a prayer request, again, you can email me, bkschmidt65 at gmail.com. We'd love to pray for you. And then on the first and third Friday of the month, which this Friday is the third Friday, we do have our men's group called The Huddle, and it meets at 830 uh, in the coffee room next to the church room. And all the men are included, are invited to come to that. We have other meetings as well. We've got a Bible study at Big Sky. We've got a Bible study down at Leisure Woods and some other things going on. Just a lot. And uh, just praise God for Calvary Alliance Church. We're located on Highway 76 East in Hiawassee, right across from the Towns County Schools. And oh, by the way, just a shout out to the Towns County Indians. Uh, one last well, I'm doing this video on Saturday, but they won last night. Homecoming game, won 14 to 21. So congratulations to the Towns County Indians. All right. Hey, again, thanks for joining us for the video. We hope to see you again next week. God bless.